Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about one other thing, and this is finding a perpendicular bisector. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we don't name things creatively in math class. If it's a perpendicular bisector, it's definitely going to be perpendicular. And bisect, well, bisect, bi meaning two, sect meaning sections. So what we're going to do, a bisector takes either a segment and it cuts it in half so that this side would be the same length as this side. Or if it's an angle, let's say it's a 60 degree angle, a bisector would break it up into 30 and 30. So this would be a segment bisector. This would be an angle bisector. So a segment bisector and an angle bisector. Now, if I want a perpendicular bisector, that means it's going to be perpendicular and it's going to cut whatever it is in half. So let's take a look. It says find an equation for the perpendicular bisector of the line segment whose endpoints are this and this. So here we go. We need 8 comma negative 6 and we need negative 2 comma 4. Okay. So, we know what we need. We'll put this over here. A perpendicular bisector. Well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, anytime we're given points, the first thing we do, step number one, is graph them. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. There you go. So I got negative 2, comma 4. I got 8, comma negative 6. This makes sense, so I now have a segment. Now, by the way, we can bisect a segment because it has a certain number of steps or length. We cannot bisect a full-on line because a line goes on forever and ever and ever. And how can you cut in half infinity? That's silliness. So we can't do that. Now, if we want a perpendicular bisector, we're going to need two pieces. We're going to need number two, the perpendicular part. So it's literally right in the name. So the perpendicular part means I need to know the slope of the line I have presently. So 4 minus negative 6. Whoop, I got too many negatives in there. Minus negative 6. So 4 take away negative 6. And then negative 2 minus 8. So boop, boop. And I get 10 over negative 10. So the answer is negative 1 over 1. Now, the reason I left this as a fraction is because that's the slope of our segment. So that is currently the slope. What I need is a perpendicular slope. So negative 1 over 1, how do I make it perpendicular? I switch it. Now this is kind of silly in the sense that what happens when I take negative 1 over 1 and I flip it and switch the sign? Well, it just turns into positive 1 because the top and the bottom happen to be the same number, even though they were opposite signs. So my new slope, my perpendicular slope, which, by the way, upside down T means perpendicular. So my perpendicular slope is 1. So now I need the next part. I need the bisector. Well, bisector means I need to find how to cut this in half. What do I know about cutting something in half? Well, I know midpoint. So with midpoint, I can easily do this. x1 plus x2 all over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 all over 2. Okay, so I got negative 2 plus 8 all over 2, 4 plus negative 6 all over 2. And so that gives me 6 over 2. That gives me negative 2 over 2. That gives me 3 comma negative 1. Now let's see if that makes sense. 1, 2, 3, down 1. Does that look like it's somewhere in the middle? Well, yeah, it kind of does. So that makes sense. So I now have my perpendicular. I now have my bisector. Now all I need 
is the equation. Well, wait a minute, folks. We already know how to do this. We have a slope. We have a point. And so if I have a slope and a point, well, gee, that sounds like a perfect opportunity for point slope form. Okay, so here we go. Y minus negative 1 equals 1, parenthesis, X minus 3. Y plus 1 equals uh, 1 times X minus 3. There it is. There's a perfectly good point slope form. If you wanted to, could you get Y equals MX plus B? Sure. Give the 1 away. That's easy. Then subtract 1, subtract 1. Y equals 1X minus 4. And there is the slope y-intercept form of the exact same line. So, folks, we've done this over and over and over and over again. All you have to be able to do is use the equations, be able to graph the points, be able to do the midpoint. Perpendicular, so we're taking all this stuff that we know and we're squeezing it together. And that's the way geometry works. We're building a process here. We're building a process. All right, with that in mind, that is this section.